and that he may profit us in every way. I'm going to read from verse 8 of Leviticus chapter 6. And I'm going to stop at verse 13. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Give Aaron and his sons this command. These are regulations for the burnt offering. Emphasis on the word regulation. A regulator is used to control the flow and uh, the pressure of a force. A regulator is used to sustain and control the flow of a force in a given dimension or direction. And God was speaking to Aaron, uh, was speaking to Moses as an instruction to Aaron and his sons that this regulation must be in place as it concerns the fire of God um, domiciled and resident and given to them. That is, there must be regulation that is a custom and a consistent practice by which we must engage and sustain the presence of God. He said, these are the regulations that concerns uh, the burnt offering, the sacrifice that brought the presence of God. Um, and it is because of the presence of that sacrifice uh, that the presence of God is given. But this force of God's presence must be regulated. So these are the regulations for the burnt offering. So the burnt offering is to remain on the altar heart throughout the night I emphasize the altar heart the center of the altar and the fire must be kept burning on the altar the priest shall put on his linen cloth with linen undergarment next to his body and shall remove the ashes of a burnt offering that the fire has consumed on the altar then he is to take off these clothes and put on others and carry the ashes outside the camp to a place that is ceremonially clean. The fire on the altar must be kept burning and it must not go out. Every morning the priest is to add firewood and arrange the burnt offering on the fire and burn the, fire of the fellowship offering on it. The fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. The fire, a symbol and a token of God's presence, must be kept burning continuously and it must not go out. It is, God's, it is not God's responsibility to maintain His presence in your life. It is your duty. It is not God's responsibility to sustain His presence over you. It is your duty. It is not something you walk to receive. It is something you must labor to keep. It is not of works. Lest any man should boast, Ephesians says, it is the gift of God. The presence of God um, is a gift of God to you to survive the terrain and the periliosity and the challenges of this life. It is not worked for, but it must be labor to keep. So the fire must burn continuously. And the Bible told us in the book of Exodus, as the children of Israel were delivered from Egypt and root, you know, the wilderness to the land of promise, one thing was constantly before them. It was called the pillar of fire. And that pillar of fire is something imposing that as the children of Israel approach any city or any nation or any town, the enemy becomes dreadful because of that presence they see. 
how can a people be moving and something that cannot be explained in the context of human existence goes before them it is something that could be seen with their physical eyes a pillar that is burning with flames going ahead of a people no nation could rise against them a token a residential presence by the providence of God to a people. And I say to you, brothers and sisters, that that same grace is available to us as God's people. And God is saying, you have a duty to keep this fire. You have a duty to sustain this flame. I have given it. Keep it. And the problem with most of us as I've been emphasizing for about four weeks now, is that we are not conscious of this present first and foremost. Talk less of keeping it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? If you don't know what you have, you cannot keep it. And if you don't value what you have, you may lose it. It is a popular saying that when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. But my focus this morning is to give us practical tips on how to practice the presence of God. How do we sustain the consciousness of the presence of God? Number one, be mindful of God's presence. Be mindful. Mindfulness is not something that happens automatically but it is everything that is intentionally cultivated mindfulness is a cultivation of a habit to always put the thought of God in your mind the scripture says let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus the mind that is saturated with the consciousness and the thought of God. One thing that this world and Satan are skin into the affairs and the activities of life. That is just by the way. My third point, why I have said all of this is that the right source and the most valid source to which you can furnish your mind with the right thoughts is what? The Bible. It is inherent. It has authority. Excuse me. There is this force of the spirit behind it. I challenge everyone here. Go and learn how to read scriptures. And let me give you a tip. Don't start from complex books of the Bible. It's not compulsory you read certain books of the Bible. Though it's encouraged. But start from the Gospels, the Epistles. You can begin. My favorite is the book of John. Read it as often times as possible. From there move to the Epistles. Excuse me. You might leave Revelation for now. And let it cross to eternity. But as you progress and mature, you are able to eat such portions of scripture as well because Christ is, all, is on all the pages of the book. And excuse me, if you cannot read English, don't buy English Bible. Are you understand what I'm saying? If it is your Bible, you can read. Buy. If it is your language, it's not in Shagamu. Send money to your village and say, Help me get who? Help me get what? Bible in my language. And for those who cannot read at all, God has walked through men. We have audio Bibles, right? Ask people. Walk up to Vincent at the back there. Pastor talks, say audio Bible day. I want the one with them, don't talk for pigeon. There is pigeon Bible. Are you understand what I'm saying? Bible in what? Pigeon English. John 3.16. Uh, how would they say it in pigeon? 
God loved the world so they he can't sacrifice in son. So any person will believe him, no go die. But will get life forever and ever. You don't know when me. We are not joking. If you need Bible in pidgin language, audio, come and meet me. I will download that for you. Instead of listening to all kinds of and all kinds of information, listening to Bible in pidgin language, you will laugh. In fact, there is another version in pidgin language that is from worry. Now that one you should, you should go and buy. Worry version of the Bible. Why I'm saying this is that no one has any excuse by which the word of God should not dwell in you richly. Number four, meditate constantly on God. And that practice is lost in the world today, the practice of meditation. Let me define it. Meditation is to be in solitude of a thought or a person. To be in solitude for a thought or a person in a state of quietness where you can recline and all that is on your mind is a person, an idea, or a thought you want to gain better understanding. That is meditation. Meditation can be equated to a process of digestion of food. And the reason why most of us are having spiritual complications is because our spiritual digestive system is either non-existent, blocked, or die-functioning. When a man eats apple, and you know they digest. What thing be that? What is that? Constipation. I want to announce something good to us. One Sunday in September will be Pigeon English Sunday. Eh? I discussed with, I think you were there, Vincent was there. And it's something I'm going to plan. Praise God. What am I saying? Why we are sick spiritually is because our digestive system of the spirit is not functioning well. When you eat a bar and you cannot digest it, you, became a, you become a subject of pain. Is that not what it is? You will not be able to sleep. Something will be standing as stone in your chest. You'll be so restless. In fact, you'll be so useless to yourself. Why? Because you eat and you cannot digest. But in the spirit, if you are not able to meditate, it is not possible for you to digest the thought of God until it profits you. Excuse me, it is digestion that, you know, uh, bring the nutrient of a food and disperse it to necessary areas and components of your body. Are you understand what I'm saying? When food moves from yours, who did it in the greater science? Where does it go to first? Small intestine or large intestine? Your large intestine, Abby. Help me now, in my destiny. Mommy Ajay, where does it go first? Eh? First, Abby. Correct now. It goes from your small intestine. Excuse me, is small intestine where Shaki is? Where is Shaki? Why are you making my preaching difficult this morning? You know that Shaki, it looks like something very. Is it Shaki that grinds the food into small, small pieces, have you? Look at me like that now. Eh? That is the process of digestion. The food will first of all be grinded and blended. Abby. When 
you eat something solid, how do you pass it out? Is it solid? That is, it has gone through a process of blending. When it is blended by organs in your physical frame, the nutrients and what your body needs to benefit from it gets separated from what needs to pass out as waste. Right? That is how it is also in the spirit. When you hear the word of God, it comes in a block of thoughts. When you begin to meditate on it, the one that needs to profit your area of marriage will come there. The one that needs to profit your area of finances will come there from single word. That's why in a single service, you can get blessed in many directions. If you are able to get back home and process what you had. In the book of Hebrews, the Bible spoke about the children of Israel. Why the presence of God will not profit them. I think Hebrews chapter 4. He said the word that you are hearing. The word was also spoken to them. I tell you, look for that scripture. He said, but that word did not profit them because it did not mix with faith in their heart that heard it. You see the scripture for me? You tell me quickly. That should be Hebrews, I think chapter 4, dear about. Hebrews what? 4, 2. Okay, let's go there quickly. He said, for we also have the good news proclaimed to us, just as did to them. But the message they had was of no value to them. Can you see that word? Because they did not mix it with faith in their hearts. He said, the word did not profit them. The word had no value because they did not mix it up. It is meditation that has you to do what? Mix it up. My wife fries puff puff and don't know what I'm made by. But the process of making that puff puff, not my wife self, mommy glory, you did. Is it possible to want to fry puff puff, put flour in the pot, in bringing out puff puff? And when people begin to eat it, ah, this puff puff sweet, something has happened. There has been what? A mixing. You cannot get value until you are able to turn over, over, over. Even animals regurgitate. When a goat eats food, have you seen goat regurgitating before? What do they do? They go to a corner. You see that? So then you look, whoa. They will start chewing again and digest it. Is that not what they do? That is the process of meditation. How come Satan has succeeded? In taking this culture away from us, he does not want the word of God to profit us. We leave service now. After, instead of going home to rest, as God has declared Sunday a resting day, the next thing we go is times meeting. By the time we get to times meeting, what happens to the word of God that we have had? Eh? Leave it there, sir. The essence of a holy day is so that when you get back home, play with your children, play with your family, go on a bed and relax and bring the thought, the word of God back. Everything you had in church on Sunday, if you have written some key points somewhere, you carry the notes, you begin to look at it, internalize it over and over again. You cannot do that on a routine basis and not profit from God. It's not possible. You will, of necessity, profit from God. Praise the Lord. How to practice the presence of God? Well, number five, Abby. Service. Service. Go about serving God. There's no way it will not create further platform for the consciousness of God. When I mean service, I'm not talking about carrying chair and table in church. I'm talking about kingdom service. Evangelism is one of such service. Visitation is one of such service. Care and praying for one another is one of such service. Loving one another is one of such service. Carrying one another's burden is one of such service. Kingdom service, kingdom oriented service. You will know. If it is that service is bringing or is being done to a means of pain, 
you know that it's because of God you are doing this. Are you understand what I'm saying? Service. Say, so you shall serve the Lord your God with all your heart. Service. When you serve God, even in your place of work, I was in a meeting yesterday and somebody asked a question. I was not opportune to ask the question, but what was on my mind as the person was answering him was that even most of us don't see our occupation as a platform for ministry. What I mean by occupation is this. It is not only those that stand behind poopy that are ministers. That was the bottom line of that meeting yesterday. You are a teacher. You are a tailor. You are a salesman. You work in an office. How are you taking advantage of that platform as a means to serve God? When Jesus was going in the book of Luke, he said, told us a parable of a, a man that gave his servants talent, Abby. and when he was giving them the talent, he said, occupy till I come. That is through your occupation, trade these gifts. You talk to at least not less than 20 people in a day by statistics who can go through it. That is a man have interaction with nothing less than 20 persons a day. If you are conscious, want to practice the consciousness of God, look at every or such contact as though it is God that is connecting you for kingdom purpose. Number six, prayer. When I mean prayer, I mean praying in the Holy Ghost. They say, build up your most holy faith. That is Jude 20, Abby. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Build up your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. That you don't have that you need. It is fundamental to your survival as a child of God. It is not dramatic. It is an authentic way to engage the presence of God. It is not something that you look at people that have it as strange. You are the one that is strange if you are the kingdom of God and you don't have it. It is a part of your nature. It should be a part of your framework and your makeup as a child of God. Desire it. Ask God for it. And don't stop at nothing until you get it. It is freely given. And it is easy. You don't know how much it will help your prayer life. You can pray on the Holy Ghost. There are many times our body don't want to pray. There are many times I will wake up and we have so much burden, too much thought in my heart. I don't know which word to use to express. But the Bible says that the Holy Ghost will help you with groanings that word cannot express. As you begin to move around, you begin to see an energy being generated on your inside. A force of the spirit that will begin to give you human expression for the body in your heart. Are you understand what I'm saying? So it is something as you look for money desperately, what should you look for? Ability to pray in the spirit. Be desperate for it as much as you are desperate for one naira. I say it to challenge you, not to spite you. It's an ability of the spirit that you must have. And that's how you can pray always. I was traveling recently, and I was so burdened in my heart. All I was doing was la posha leader. Nobody was hearing me, but my mouth was moving and my spirit, and I was lost in that realm. By the time you are done for 30, 40 minutes, at times as the spirit will lead you, two, three hours, there is no way you can pray your understanding for 30 minutes. I don't know how possible is that. What do you want to be saying? That's why your prayer life is so boring. My father, even if you have lists, on the prayer list, you finish reading it in 30 minutes. Except it's a prayer book. I pray that every family member in my house, I pray number two. I pray. Tomorrow, you have prayed it today. Will you be interested to read the same prayer? No. 
but there is a form of dynamism that praying in the spirit brings to your prayer life. If you want this, I have said it, you don't even need me to receive it. I got mine without anyone laying hands on me. It's a function of desire and desperation. But in case you need help, you know, as an act of faith, you can meet up with me, meet up with any of the pastors and say, I want to receive the gift of the Spirit. They will lay hands on you. Paul was writing to Timothy, they found the flame, the gift of the Spirit that you receive by what? The laying on of my hands. So it's a form of transferring and imparting that gift. And there are several challenges why people don't receive that gift. I once ministered to a young lady. From what I know about this young lady, she was far from receiving the gift. Because there are some people that have this practical mind. Is it practical mind? I'll call it. A kind of mind that is just plain. Uh, what would I call that kind of mind now? They are just there. In fact, they already believe that they have some philosophy and idea about speaking in tongues. But one day I called and I said, let's go to our former church. I said, I know that you will not be able to speak this thing. I said, yes, because I don't think it's real. She was doing eyes for me like this. I said, can you just agree with me and believe? On that Thursday, before you finish, everywhere was scattered. As I speak now, she speaks very well, and her prayer life is different. Nobody, excuse me, there is no qualification that you need to have to receive this gift. In fact, if you are looking at your sin, it is that gift that will help you overcome that sin. The Bible says, who is it that lacks wisdom? The book of James. So let him ask God, who gives without finding fault? This is one of the gifts God gives his people without looking at the fault in their lives. Because it's a correctional gift in the life of any believer. Are you understand what I'm saying? Are you understand what I'm saying? Please, if you are here, you cannot pray in the Holy Ghost. See me as a matter of urgency. It is something that you need desperately to survive as a child of God. And there's no way you'll be able to speak in the spirit that you won't be able to sustain the consciousness of the presence of God. And somebody once told me, he said, but I see people that speak in tongues and they, they still live a very reckless life. And I, is, is it because of such men you will not receive your own? Eh? Oh, don't look at fault in the lives of people. In fact, one of the most corrupted and problematic church in the Bible is the what? Corinthian church. There are many levels of atrocity in that church. Excuse me. Paul said they excel in the gift of the Spirit more than any other church. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Lastly, I call it fellowship. Complaint of like minds. Complaint of like minds. Godly complaint. Godly association. Many of us we have fire, but the fire extinguishers around our life is greater than the fire that we have. There are many people in this service now that the word of God is coming to them, is eating them. But once they step here, the first two, three calls they will get, okay, I beg this evening. You see the show? Too much of fire extinguishers. Your association. The Bible says that evil communication corrupts good manners. Some of us have good acts, but bad complaint. Our congregation is of the wicked. The only time you be in the company of believers is on Sunday morning. From Monday to Saturday, you are surrounded, or you chose to be surrounded by evil complaints. People that, in their principles and their way of life, negates your faith. Your friends don't look like you. And they know you don't look like them. So when you are reading your Bible and they are coming, quickly you change it to TikTok. So that they don't know that you self, they read Bible. Each time you are among them, you know that something is different. But you shall know that I must be here. No, you don't have to be there. You cannot be saying that it is God you want to be thinking about and you surround yourself with people that they are full of satanic influences and they are embodiment of demonic activities. 
and want to sustain the presence of God. No, it doesn't work that way. If you must practice the presence of God, you must look for iron that can sharpen your iron. The word of God says, iron sharpened iron. So, a brother sharpens the countenance of his friends. Don't look for individuals that will blunt or that will make your iron get blunt faster. Be that light of the world. Be that salt of the earth. Be that lamb that is set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. Be that agent of influence among your cycle. If you must keep friends with the bad people, be intentional that you are inf going to influence them and not subject yourself to their influence. But when you are weak, avoid and run from such men. Say, blessed is he who does not stand in the way of sinner or see it in the seat of discomfort, but whose delight is in the Lord. And upon this word, he meditates day and night. I challenge you, begin to check the cycle of your influences and friends. If you ask somebody that their presence is not beneficial to you, avoid them. I'm not saying you should make them your enemy, but give them distance. They cannot be your friend, and they should not be your friend. Stop calling them, my friend. They are not. They are satanic agents to pollute and to corrupt and to derail your destiny. Let me ask you, since they have been your friend, what good has come out from that friendship? Otherwise, wasting your days, wasting your life, wasting your season, wasting your resources. I charge you in the name of the Lord. If the thought of God will take dominance in your heart, then surround yourself with people that will flame that thought, not people that will kill it. On this note, I want to round up this morning, even as we begin to pray. I don't know how you want to pray, but just bow down your heads. If you are inspired by what you have heard, and begin to pray in the direction that this word has come across to you. I don't know how you want to ask God to help you. But if it is God that has spoken through me, must have dropped in your spirit man the request to present before him now. So bow down your head and begin to engage God in the direction of the conviction you have received this morning. Say, Lord, here am I. Help me. I don't know in what view you are seeing yourself right now. But just begin to tell God, Lord, you know, many things have been said. But this one, help me. Help me. Many of you, you may be too much overwhelmed by strange influences, strong forces of men that you cannot disconnect from. Say, God, help me. Help me. Help me. When I see many young people in this church, when I see the glory of God, I see that if this one can just take a step further into God, Something great and beautiful can come forth from their lives. Glory. I sense unction. But yet, I still see many distractions. If you fall into that class, say, Lord, help me. Help me. Help me. I see servants of God, ministers of God. People that matter in the scheme of God's agenda in this place. Among the young ones, even among the adults. But say, Lord, help me. Oh, <laughs> 
and glory in Jesus name we pray I'll suggest that you come and take an hour of the floor. 